graduated from Polly and I'm going to Towson this fall. I have one child and she is 10 months. Currently I attend uh, Baltimore City Community College. I have one child, a daughter, she's uh, six months. I'm still with my child's parent, he's my husband. We will be married a year, August 31st. I'm not with uh, my daughter's mother. Mentally? It does mentally require patience? Uh, mentally? I'm still not mentally ready to be a parent, I, I can admit that, but um, all I can say is that it's caused me to man up, in other words, basically. Emotionally, um, I have got a better understanding of what love is. Emotionally, having a child has changed me completely, as far as I used to didn't really care about anyone other than myself. Daily hardships I have to go through. Well, I wake up at 5.45, I have to be out the house by 6.15 in order to get to work by 9 o'clock. But that normally doesn't happen. So I leave out the house like 6.30, I gotta take my child all the way across town to daycare, and I gotta come all the way back here to, day to come to work. And after work, I get off at 2, I go all the way back to pick her up, and I get in the house at like 7. I would have to say not being able to see my child has affected me the most. It, it, um, it makes me think, like, you know, what will she think when she's older when I can't see her as often as I would like to? So. Having a child has taught me how to budget my money very, very carefully. Well, it's taught me that teamwork is most important and that one parent can raise a child, but it works out better if both are playing their roles perfectly or as perfect as possible. My life has to revolve around her, so whenever she decides she wants to go to sleep, it's the only time I can sleep. Build a strong partnership with the um, other parent and um, try to be there as much as possible for your child in every way necessary. I would tell other teen parents not to handle more kids until they're really ready. Younger, um, an experience that I encountered was having to live through my parents' divorce. And it made me resolve within myself that when I grew up, I was going to get married one time and that I wasn't going to get a divorce because of how it affected my siblings and myself. You know, well, my father. It's interesting, my mother and father, I told my father, mother, I don't, you know, I don't remember my father being around. I think they got a divorce at a very young age. Uh, but they had a healthy relationship. Even though they were divorced, they had a very healthy relationship. My mom never said anything negative about my dad. You know, it's, it's not an easy task to be with someone. However, uh, as a woman and as a wife and mother, my mother was very instrumental in teaching me uh, the values of being a woman, you know, to be domesticated, to cook, to clean to make a comfortable home for your family. Um, in relationship, uh, definitely being loyal and um, being very virtuous. In society, we take on roles, but I think more presently, I think those roles need to be more defined. There's no more, of the, I mean, we know by nature, women are child, you know, they, they, they are more affectionate. They bear children because they, they carry a child for, you know, for somewhat 10 months. Uh, in the womb, so that we know that there's a there's a lot of affection that actually exists. So when it comes to that role, we know that she's the nurturer. You know, I am the protector, but I'm but I'm also the nurturer. She's also the protector. But we we talk about defining what those roles look like. It's not that you're just cooking, you're just not just cleaning. Those days are over. At meal times, we would all have our plates of food fixed for us, you know, from the kitchen. But he would have his food in individual bowls where he can serve for himself what he wanted as much as he wanted. He would get up and he wouldn't you know, worry about his place being cleared. She would come and clear his place. And I just saw, I watched how she tended to him and made sure that his needs were being met in the house. And that impact had a great impact on me because it made me think that, okay, this is what you do when you're married. The times were different, things were a lot different. And uh, during that time, uh, my father worked night shift, my mother worked a day shift, and they very rarely saw, you know, much of each other except on the weekends. 
Um, but I do believe that there should be some compromise to spend that time with one another because it, it, it's so important to um, have that bond with your husband, you know, with your spouse, period. Um, and when you miss that, you miss a lot and you don't realize it until it's too late. Based on how I was raised, I learned a lot on how a man or a girl or a boy were supposed to behave in a relationship. I was raised in a very non-religious home. I had an older sister, she was nine years older than me, and she was boy crazy. And I always, it made me think that a girl always had to have a boyfriend. And I grew up thinking that I need a boyfriend. That affected me negatively because it never really allowed me to think as a child and just enjoy myself as a child. You know, young girls and boys, I don't believe, have any need to be boyfriends and girlfriends. I believe girls and boys can be friends, but to put them in a girl-boyfriend, a girl-and-boyfriend relationship is unnecessary stress. You know, I, I don't think, you know, you can look at the whole Romeo and Juliet conversation. I think they were in their teens, 14, 15, it could be 12, 13. They were very, very young. I think, um, I think you'll know when you're ready for a relationship, but I think that adults really need to sit down and talk with young people. We went to high school together and uh, we took the same tree and uh, some 15, 16 years later we met back up and uh, that's the rest is history pretty much. I mean I think that there was a level of chemistry. Um, we met a couple of weeks before um, the Million Man March October 16th in 1990, 1995 and um, you know we were kind of drawn to each other because of you know the work that I do and the work um, that my wife does. She was in medical school at the time at Howard University. She was very passionate about working with children. Um, I'm very passionate about working with children. So um, initially it was that we, we seemed to be interested in a lot of the same things. And I met her at a, uh, a nightclub that her brother owned called Larry Stewart's, which is still, which is downtown Baltimore. We met on an off night, you know, she was there on an off night. Uh, she wasn't performing, I was there on an off night. I wasn't performing and we connected based on that. Um, my past does dictate my future because of the things that have happened to me growing up. Both, you know, the good things that happened to me as well as the tragedies that I've experienced. The loss of loved ones, um, seeing family members, you know, go to prison. I mean, all of those things have, have had a dramatic impact on the way that I see the world. And, and the way that I raised my family, the way that I raised my family and my children. You know, I don't allow the past to dictate my future, but I believe the past has a lot of stories to tell. But you can also find out, you know, what's behind you to move forward. So I don't allow it to dictate, but I allow it to sort of help navigate my life. Because there's a lot of people, people that I didn't know and people that I did know that sort of laid the foundation for who I am. I think my life was sort of planned out by the people that prayed for me to be here. There are some things in my past that I'm sure dictate the path that I take in my future. The fact that I, you know, was a young mother, uh, for one, <clears throat> that in itself made me realize that I had to buckle down and really get serious about life.